once the sheep move up to high pastures, escorting dogs and men will leave them to graze endlessly. Just as the flock's welfare is a constant preoccupation here, so a way of life is zealously nurtured in Snowdonia. There is commitment to a farm, to a family, to an ancient language, the mother tongue of Pierce Williams. He almost blends into the mountain. A uh, very hard character, used to the harsh elements and the hard weather that we have in Snowdonia. But once you get to know him, he's quite friendly and nowhere near as harsh as first appearances appear. He is very conscious of his heritage, very conscious of what the place means to him and he hopes that his children will have the same feeling for the place. Between the mountains are squeezed Snowdonia's tiny towns and villages. Even on streets and pavements these wiry, nimble folk are hill people. Elsewhere in Snowdonia, there is space for surprises. As where the mountains slope to the Mediterranean caricature by Clough Williams Ellis, Port Marion. Long before Port Marion, Stone Age man used the igneous rock here to make tools and weapons for export to Britannica's warlike tribes. The circular dwelling places with stout walls were built by Celts. From these hilltop forts, they could observe the approach of strangers. At Sigontium, the Roman Empire reached its westernmost limits. Several hundred soldiers were garrisoned at this strong point above Carnarvon. They guarded prospectors seeking mineral wealth. Snowdonia's rocks yielded lead and copper, but even the Romans couldn't find gold this far north in Wales. But since the Romans' day, others have found gold, either by mining or, like Jack Whittaker, by panning patiently beside the upcountry streams. They seek, they sift, they bide their time. And sometimes they find. Snowdonia gives up gold grudgingly, but from some of its nuggets, wedding rings have been fashioned for kings and queens. 